Welcome to the Alan Elkan Interviews, an unprecedented window into the minds of some of the most well-known and respected figures of the last 25 years. Paolo D'Agostino, you are the director... Director of the Musei del Bardello, which is a, a new museum consortium. It's a museum group forged after the museum reform, or according to someone, reformation of museums of 2014. What was the reform? It was the reform put forward by the then, now again, Minister Dario Franceschini, with the intent of making 20 Italian... Minister of, Minister of Culture. Right? Yes. 20 Italian museums more independent in terms of budget managing and cultural project and have them more independent more right? independent yes independent uh, on what on budget managing and cultural project strategic planning and it was the first time that they introduced governing board which only existed for four major institutions in Italy but also an advisory council and with the reform the Museo Nazionale del Bardello which is the most important museum for Italian sculpture in the world so now it comprises a major tourist attraction like the Medici Chapel where Michelangelo masterpiece of the new sacristy is, as well as less prominent but equally important museums, such as the Church and the Museum of Orsa Michele, which is another repository which houses the sort of like atlas of early 15th century sculptures with masterpieces by Donatello, Ghiberti, Verrocchio, Giambologna, and then two lesser-known small museums, which used to be private residences, Palazzo d'Avanzati, which is the, one of the few surviving medieval homes in Florence, and Casa Martelli, which was the family residence of a very important family, very close to the Medici. A lot of work, but a very exciting one. And the main challenge is to me, as a scholar of Italian sculpture, is to bring this amazing group of masterpieces housed in some of the most important buildings in Florence to the forefront of museums and city life. They are wrongly considered minor museums in Florence because they are compared with the Uffizi or the Accademia, but they are not not only equally important, but also deeply connected to the story of history of Florence and the history of museums making at the end of the 19th century. How come you specialize uh, in sculpture? It was in 1993 when I was studying at the University of Naples and I had to choose the topic of my BA and my professor then was Fiorella Zricchia Santoro, a faithful student of Roberto Longhi. She encouraged me to explore sculpture and she said that in Naples everyone was studying paintings. So she gave me a book and two months to decide whether or not I wanted to do my BA thesis on Pietro Bernini, Gian Lorenzo's father, and after two months I was completely hooked and chose to become not only a sculptor expert, but to specialize in late 16th and 17th century Italian sculpture. I went to the Courtauld after my BA because I was so intrigued by the Anglo-American scholars where sculpture was much more studied then. I applied for an MA at the Courtauld Institute of Art and I did my MA thesis on Bernini's Gian Lorenzo this time, Bernini's pupils working in Naples. Then you had a career, you, you came to America, no? For a while, you were... Yes. First, 
I worked at the VNA for two years to help organize a show on Italian terracotta sculpture. And, and, I also, and the show also traveled to Houston, Texas. And it was my very first visit to the U.S. And then in 2006, many years later, I got a senior fellowship at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York to finish my book out of my PhD on Cosimo Fazzago, who was the main leading sculptor of Baroque Naples. And after a few months that I was doing my research, Jim Draper, who very recently passed away, he was the curator of European sculpture at the Met, asked me if I was interested to become a curator in my life. And I said yes. <laughs> and it was a turning point because I completed my fellowship, went back to Italy for a year and a half to Naples, where I resumed my academic teaching. You were Napolitan? Yes, by birth, yes. And then in 2009, Jim Draper hired me back as a senior associate this time to work on the catalogue of Italian bronze sculpture. And then I worked in the Department of European Sculpture and Decorative Arts for four years, doing research for the bronze catalogue or co-organizing exhibitions like Bernini Sculpting in Clay. It was a major show on terracottas by Bernini. And Antonio Canova, The Seven Last Works. Then I went to Yale in 2013 at the Yale University Art Gallery. And I worked there for two years in the European Art Department as curator. And then I was appointed director and went back to Italy. Director in Florence? Yes. It was August 18 of 2015. Are you pleased to be in Florence? And uh, you have been re-nominated, re no? Yes, for another four years. I am incredibly pleased. When I arrived, and still now, I have always butterflies in my stomach. Every time. Every time I walk through the rooms of the Vergello and look in the eyes the masterworks of Donatello, Michelangelo, Cellini, D'Ambologna and Bernini, to name a few. And after the reform, the first three years, I would say, I worked to create the structure in terms of administration and managing resources for this museum's group. What is different from American museums and for us is still the major challenge. We cannot hire or choose who works for us. Staff is still managed by the ministry. So it took a long time to get some of the resources which are indispensable to run a muse an independent museum. And I also concentrated with the curators who were already working in the museums to put together a kind of like master plan of indispensable works to be done in terms of building conservation, reinstallation of collections, as well as new narrative of museum presented to the public. Is sculpture very much followed by a large public? Not as much as it should be. There are major masterpieces from ancient sculpture, like Greek and some of the Roman masterworks. But when it comes to early modern, there are very, very fewer artists who are appreciated. And even the most famous sculpture, which is not in my museums, it's Michelangelo's David. It's visited mostly because it is a, a must-see in Florence, and not really because people fully appreciate what sculpture is. So, ironically, if you ask 
Italians and foreigners. What is Donatello's David? The majority will answer that is a cinema word and not Donatello masterpiece in bronze. How many visitors do you have? We have about 250,000 visitors at the Bardello per year, and the whole museum group makes almost 700,000 visitors per year. We could do more, and we are working with the ministry to improve opening hours. How many people work there? The whole museums should have 123 staff members across the board from guards to curators and administrators. We are now 66. Is this a big problem? Yes, and I think it's a problem that affects all of the public administration, as you know. How come? Why? Because we are approaching a turning point. In other words, many people are retiring because they reach the age limit, and they have to find the funds to replace them and it's going to take at least I would say another four six years to have the cycle completed. I also think that until I would say about 10 years ago the Ministry for Cultural Heritage was always considered unimportant when it came to plan hiring strategies. So I think that in a way the strong interest that our appointments and the reform sparked mm -hmm. also created the urgency to find a solution and change policies for that ministry. It's going to take time, but at least now they have a plan in place. Florence uh, is one of the most visited art cities no? yes. in the world. Is there a lot of competition between institutions? Well, there is a lot of competition among institutions, but I think what is changing in a positive way is also we are all trying to encourage residents to come back and revisit their own museums. We are not only planning our events in terms of tourist attractions, but also improving cultural and education programs to have museums play a new role in society. I also think that the municipality of Florence is doing a very good job in monitoring the flux of tourists. They developed, they had a UNESCO plan, which was established in 2016, I believe, to diversify tourist itineraries and to encourage a network of cultural institutions in the city. Why should one visit the Bargello Museum and how is, do you encourage it? I will start with the Bargello because I think it's the place that can make everyone easily and very effectively understand the importance of Florence from the political and the cultural point of view. The building itself mesmerizes whoever enters the courtyard and it also has the oldest portrait of Dante Alighieri who was sentenced to death at the Bargello, luckily had escaped, and then through the masterpieces of Renaissance sculpture you can appreciate the importance of not only the artist's ingenuity, but also the intelligence of the Medici dynasty in promoting sculpture as a political medium. The Medici chapels and or San Michele can tell you not only the close connection of the Medici with the city in the first case, with Michelangelo masterpiece of the new sacristy, which was his last work in Florence. But Or San Michele is probably the one that encapsulates at best the power and refinement of the guilds of Florence. What is your ambition? You just received in New York the FIAC Foundation Award with Xavier Salomon. 
and curator at the Free Collection. You recently worked on a Bertoldo exhibition. I am aware that given the richness of the collections in the five museums, we are often included in international partnerships. Before Bertoldo, who was the last pupil of Donatello and the first master of Michelangelo in sculpture. And we were major lenders to the spectacular Michelangelo show at the Met in 2018. And we co-organized the Verrocchio exhibition with the National Gallery in Washington. But in this case, we also had a major exhibition in Florence. So it was a three institutions collaboration. And it was the first time that a public museum in Florence was uh, included as a venue of the show. So we were not only lenders, as it generally happens, but part of the Verrocchio exhibition was held for Jello. What are your future plans? We are undergoing major renovations and conservation works that should be completed in three years' time. So most of the Bargello will be reinstalled. We will have a new exit for the Medici chapels and better access for Orsa Michele and a new exit for the Medici chapel. And we are also developing new international collaborations for other major exhibitions. Next year we will be mostly busy in participating at the celebrations in honor of Dante Alighieri. Alan Elkan interviews.